Hello, this is Jenny at Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have an art journal page for you and I will be using a napkin again. I have a piece of mixed media paper here and it is approximately five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And I say approximately because I cut my pages off a big roll of mixed media paper that I purchased a number of years ago. It is 36 inches tall and like 36 yards long. I know, it's, I'm going to be using this roll of paper forever. This is the napkin I am using today, and I purchased it from Charitino, and I will be sure to link them down below. And I'm only using one-fourth of this napkin, which means I have three other images I can use on another project. In order to separate this um, quarter, I am just going to take a little bit of water from my brush, water brush here and go along the seams or the fold lines there, and the napkin will pull right apart. This gives me a less perfect edge than I did than I would have if I use scissors, and it will make it easier to blend into the background, in my experience. So now that I've put away these other three images, all I have left to do here is separate the napkin plies, which was harder than it should have been. <laughs> it took me a hot minute to get these two separated, but I did finally get them pulled apart, and I will put that backing, the backing layer off to the side and use that a little bit later. I need to adhere this napkin to my mixed media paper and I will be using gel medium. I discovered when I did the bicycle page, which I will link right here, that sometimes the napkins are too fragile to use with the gel medium. So I have ordered some liquid medium that I can use next time I have a napkin page to do. But we're going to go with this gel medium and make it work. I am going to cover the bottom half of this page with a nice layer of gel medium. I don't want it to be super thick so it's all goopy, but I do need it to stay wet long enough to get the napkin put back down. So like always, I am walking a fine line between not enough and too much. Seems like the story of my art journal life. Anyways, <laughs> we are just going to add this layer and I've kind of flipped it around so I could put my hand on the not sticky side to hold it in place. And I'm going to put the napkin right down in the bottom left hand corner. Corner, sorry. I want that blue border to be right along the edge of the paper. And once I have that down, I can see there are a couple of corners that I did not quite get enough gel medium underneath. So I will use my brush to add the gel medium there. And then I will put a light layer of gel medium over the entire napkin. I need the napkin to not be so fragile. When I go to add other layers of paint on top of them, the gel medium also makes the mixed media paper just a little bit stiffer and less, um, less easy to tear, if that makes sense at all. So once I have the napkin all adhered down properly and the gel medium over the top, I will go ahead and stick my brush into a cup of water. I for sure don't want that to dry out with that glue in the bristles. And I am going to use my heat tool to dry the gel medium. I am working on my Teflon craft mat so it can withstand the heat of that um, heat tool. And now that it is dry, I can just take the edge of the paper and use it as a straight edge to rip that excess off. There are a couple of little fuzzies. I'll just trim those off with scissors and be done with it. Napkins are a really great place to start with an art journal page. So my next course of action is to take some paint and make it look as if the, the napkin and the art journal page are one piece. So my idea here was to take some blue distress ink paint, and this is tumbled glass distress paint, and add it to the rest of the page so that it looks like the image is kind of poking through as opposed to being... Um, underneath, I guess. I don't know. Poking through and underneath mean the same thing. I wanted it to look like the edge disappeared. That's what I was going for here. <laughs> so I am using the second ply of that paper towel, or the napkin rather, to adhere or to apply that paint. And I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a thick layer. Um, in a thin layer, it wasn't quite the same color as that border, and I really did want that to blend. So I did add a couple of layers and put it on quite, you know, pretty thick. I don't know, is thick the right word for acrylic paint? I don't know. It is still kind of translucent or transparent, so I don't know. But it does kind of hide the edge to that napkin. Um, 
corner there was still a little bit wet, but now that I've got the paint all cleaned up, I can go ahead and dry it with my heat tool and get ready to go on to the next part of this page. I'm going to use this bubble wrap and make some marks with some ch chip, chipped, wow, sapphire distress paint. And I'm going to do this again to kind of push the color to the background and pull that focal image to the foreground. I am adding the paint down to my, my craft surface here and we'll pick it up with the bubble wrap and add some bubbles or some circles, some marks, whatever you want to call it, to the top left hand side and the bottom right hand side. And again, this is in an attempt to kind of blend that napkin into the paint. So it looks like it's just kind of one piece of, of paper there with the image coming up off of the background into the foreground. I like the way that bubble wrap makes marks. I think probably I could have added the paint to the bubble wrap with a paintbrush and it would have been a little bit more defined, but I like how it turned out. So I am going to go ahead and dry this paint and I need a color that is um, opposite, right? Blue and orange is opposite on the color wheel. And because I'm using kind of a turquoise blue, I can use kind of a coral color for the um, opposite color. There's another word for it that all of a sudden I can't remember. Anyway, and I decided I wanted to take this texture paste and turn it or to color it. And you can do that with texture paste. You do have to be a little bit careful about how much liquid you're adding. But I have these two colors of distressed paint. One of them is, I think this one's Scattered Twig, and this one is Fired Brick or Barn Door. And I'm trying to make kind of a terracotta color. Of course, I'm using red and I added way too much red, so I will have to go back and add some more of that Scattered Twig to kind of um, brown it up a little bit. But complementary, that's the word I was looking for. Orange and blue are complementary colors because they are opposite each other on the color wheel. And once I have this color, the color I want it to be, I am going to mix it into that texture paste. I want to make sure that there is no white texture paste left, that all of it is the same color. So I'm just kind of going back and forth with my little palette knives and spatulas and scraping the color and the texture paste off the craft mat to make sure that it's all thoroughly colored. And then I am going to add some script to this um, art journal page with a, a stencil. I gotta get all the ick off my fingers now because I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> the stencil I am using is from the Crafters Workshop. I think it's called um, art is fun or something like that. It's not really meant to be read, but it is a scripty kind of font. And I am just kind of going around what's left of our white napkin. And it did occur to me that I probably should have moved the stencil up a little bit, but I kind of like that top edge and the bottom edge still just being blue. I just felt like it kind of worked. So here I have my texture paste. And I'm all cleaned up. I'm ready to add a little bit of ink splats and ink drips. But I'm not going to use ink. I'm going to use watercolor. And these are the Gonzi or Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors Gold Watercolors. And I am using this second one from the left. It is a red gold. And the first thing I'm going to do is load up my paintbrush with pigment and just tap it on my finger to get some ink splats or paint splats onto my page. It's kind of just a nod to the speckles on the bird eggs. So it kind of adds that speckle in another form. And then when I've decided I've had enough of this or I have enough of this, I am going to load up the paintbrush again and run it along the top edge of my mixed media paper or my art journal page and give it kind of a thick coating right along the top there and then add some more water with my spray bottle to, to cause it to drip down the front of the page. So the cool thing about water is it goes where it goes and gravity is about the only thing that tells it what to do. So I get these really cool, very organic drips that I'm trying to manipulate. <laughs> 
And one thing I should have let my texture paste dry a bit longer. It did kind of, of smudge and some of the, the forms of the letters kind of blurred, but since you can't really read it anyway, it wasn't that big of a deal. The, the ink or the paint did kind of bleed out into that gold watercolor too, but that's okay. It, it turned out just fine. So my, my next step is to add a sentiment or a quote. And I have one of these Tim Holtz chit chat sentiment strips, and I'm going to go around it with my Sharpie marker. It is printed on white core, white core. There we go. Um, paper. And I don't really want those white edges to show. So I am just going to kind of go around all the edges and then adhere this to my page. And the quote line says, when nothing is sure, everything is possible. And I don't know that that necessarily has anything to do with birds and eggs, but that's the great thing about mixed media. It doesn't have to match. And it's my art journal. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> How does that song go? It's my party. I can cry if I want to. It's my art journal and I can quote whatever I want to. <laughs> and I'm just, these are stickers. I'm just kind of running my finger over that to make sure it sticks down. I did pull out my, um, oh, what are, what brand are these pens? Um, my Zig, um, oh my gosh, what are they called? Um, oh, my Zig pens. <laughs> I think they have another name, but I don't know. And I am creating a hand-drawn border around those, uh, around the edges, around those. Um, I do want it to look intentionally hand-drawn. I don't want it to to look like I was trying to make it straight and just couldn't draw a straight line because I can't draw a straight line. So I don't want to pretend to draw a straight line, but I am just going up and down each page two or three times. I will then add a couple of little hash marks or dash marks on each line just to kind of add to that hand-drawn um, look to the page. And this is when I decide I need to stop. So I am going to go ahead and sign the page and date it and call it done. I really enjoyed creating this page. I like how it turned out. Um, let me know down below, how do you feel about the ink drips and the watercolor dripping down the page? Um, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and share my channel if you have not subscribed already. I have linked a couple of other videos here for you to watch. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a really great day.